If you guys are looking for fast, cheap, reliable coins for your college football 25 team, check out my coin sponsors at MMOXP and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. The champ is here! Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shots. Then we got the college cheese, as always. In today's video, I'm going to touch back on yesterday's video where I showed you guys a gameplay uh, where an opponent I was playing was using a very cheesy scheme on offense where he was essentially running turbo the entire game. And it wasn't until I was making that video and after I posted it that I realized that this might be an actual viable strategy. There's two things in this game that are supposedly new features to College Football 25 that aren't found in Madden 25, one being the turbo offense and the other being the wear and tear system. Now recently EA put in their recent patch notes about a week ago that they did nerf the effects of wear and tear so that they don't accrue as fast but I think they might have nerfed it too much to the point where this is actually a viable strategy that you can use in College Football 25. I'm going to show you guys that but before I do if you guys want to see more videos like this please make sure to be a subscriber hit the like button let me know in the comments section if you need more help and more money plays you can download any of my ebooks instantly simply by clicking the links in the description or the top hand comment. Now if you guys don't know what the wear and tear system is it's something that represents the amount of damage that an individual player is having as you can see here it's represented on every player uh, on the left side of this little reticle that they have around uh, the quarterback here so you can see on this first play that my opponent's quarterback is at about half of his life gone this is the easiest way to put it as he's been beaten up pretty much the entire game and on this next play since we got a hit on the quarterback you're going to see how that goes even lower into the red but not before he completes a 50 yard dime even through getting hit to his receiver from his own 10 to my 40 and now you can see that his bar is in the red which is about as low as you can go before you get injured but despite his bar being red and his rating being much lower now because of it you can see he still throws a 50 yard bomb once again on the very next play and completes it with no problems at all now we even got to see a breakdown a little bit before this where you saw that all of his ratings are dropped a lot of them by plus 10 points uh, especially when it comes to things like throw power making you wonder how much of a negative effect does wear and tear really play if your quarterback can be this bad and still throw accurate passes down the field with no problem at distance of 50 60 plus yards which is something that i even questioned in that video see all the wear and tear effects this is having on his team but it doesn't seem to be affecting his quarterback when he bombs it up so it really makes me question how much wear and tear really does and then after i put out this video i remember that they did mention wear and tear getting some changes in the latest september 19th update that happened a little over a week ago and that's because it was just one small line of text where they said that they did tune wear and tear to slow down the accrual rate and i didn't think much of it because they're always tuning the game up and down until i played this opponent here and saw that wear and tear had little to no effect on the thing that he was able to do during the game but this also got me wondering how much did they tune down the effects of wear and tear and is running a turbo offense now more viable because of it as the turbo offense has several built-in advantages and no natural disadvantages with the exception of a very limited play selection when you run turbo you really only have two options the top two options is you also have a spike ball and a fake spike ball that replace your bottom two audibles and you're also not allowed to make any hot route adjustments but the advantages that i pointed out in yesterday Today's video that you do get are much more valuable as it automatically makes the opponent's defense worse when you use it. As you can see here, it says on EA's own website that you are trading the ability to hot route and audible at the line of scrimmage for the advantage of the defense not being set and their defensive line being slower off the ball, meaning that no matter what play you run once the ball is hiked, whether you're running or passing, the defense is automatically slower. They also fatigue at a much higher rate. As you can see here from my opponent running the ball over and over and over about 10 times in a row, running the same inside zone concept, you can see that everyone in my front seven is completely gassed meaning that they're already accruing a penalty from the fact that it's a built-in penalty from the actual turbo system itself but they're also accruing penalties when it comes to the wear and tear system meaning that they're even slower and less effective and that's why you can see my opponent here breaking off more big runs and more big tackles making it much harder to play defense because that's how it's designed to play think of it like the same penalties you get when you guess pass at the wrong time if you guys don't know if you guess pass at the wrong time it makes your players slower on defense and it also makes them easier to block. Well, that's similar to the penalties that you're getting here. The only difference is you're not making any selection. Your opponent is. Instead of you guessing pass at the wrong time, your opponent just has to set the offense to turbo, and you're going to face the exact same penalties, although you have no choice about them like you would otherwise on defense. I also couldn't help but notice the inconsistencies when it came to who is occurring the wear and tear penalties. As you can see, it's only my linebackers and defensive linemen. None of the secondary players are 
incurring any penalty. And since wear and tear is based off of contact and actually hitting each other, that's why you're going to see more of a penalty from the linebackers and the defensive linemen because they're constantly running into the offensive linemen. You'll also notice on the offensive side of the ball that if you're doing this the same way, that your offensive linemen will wear down faster, as well as whoever's catching the ball or running the ball because they're the ones taking all the contact. But if you watch the replay, it's not as if the cornerbacks and the safeties aren't taking any contact. On every play, the receivers are blocking the cornerbacks or the tight ends are blocking the safeties the same way that the offensive linemen are blocking the defensive linemen and vice versa. So why are they not accruing any penalty? So I decided to do two tests. For one, I wanted to find out if there was any negative penalty to running the uh, hurry up or the turbo offense aside from what's stated. Will my players wear down faster? Which is something that EA alluded us to believe would happen if you ran turbo the entire game. So I went to a game and I simply just ran mesh double drags the entire time, just you know basically throwing to whatever drag I saw get open first and running turbo throughout the entire game. And the one thing that I noticed was that the quarterback himself didn't take any damage penalties based on the fact that I got the ball out so fast and he never actually got hit. So throwing the ball multiple times uh, in a game, basically the entire game, has no penalty at all. I also noticed that the receivers didn't get gas for constantly running their routes or running back to the line of scrimmage only the player that actually got contacted did so based off of that you really have no downside to running turbo the entire game aside from the fact that you do lose two play audibles and the ability to hot route but if you have a play like this that doesn't require any adjustments and can be run as is you could run this the entire game which is something that typically rpo plays all have as you don't have the ability to do any hot routes from those formations anyway so if you really want to be super annoying you can run turbo from a play that requires no adjustments the entire game and your opponent's defense will naturally be worse. As you can see, there is no pass rush here whatsoever as the entire defensive line is late to get out of their snap. They're late to get into their pass rush lanes, making this probably one of the easiest ways to get offensive yards in the entire game since the pass rush is quelled by the fact that I put it on turbo. I did it for the entire game, and by the fourth quarter, you could see that my entire offensive line is pretty tired, but it really doesn't matter considering that the defensive line is just as tired, and I still have the advantage of the pass rush being non-existent based off of the fact they're naturally going to be worse based off of the turbo adjustment. And I know I was running short pass plays, but my quarterback didn't get hit the entire game, so he never actually suffered any, any wear and tear the entire game either. But there definitely is no penalty to the quarterback's arm by throwing too much, which is something that they kind of alluded to when the game came out. As I can attest in this game, it's really just based off of contact only. So if there is no contact made to the quarterback, they will suffer no wear and tear penalty at all. But I also wanted to see how well a wear and tear suffered quarterback would perform. So I went to another game and basically just ran the quarterback into the defensive line over and over and over to get his wear and tear rating down to see how he would still throw passes. Would they still be accurate enough for me to play? And surely enough, I did not notice too much of a difference when it came to accuracy. As you can see right here, I'm still dropping dots even though my quarterback is negative 10 plus in throw power and all of his accuracies and everything. If you guys don't know, the thresholds are typically 85 when it comes to quarterbacks and being consistently accurate. And even with his rating dropping 10 points temporarily by the wear and tear system, he still seemed to throw an accurate ball pretty much every single time. So basically, if your quarterback is already over the thresholds, I don't think that it matters whether he drops down or not based off of what we're seeing here. I think it's still going to count as he is a above 85 throw accuracy and he's still going to be a very accurate quarterback. So none of this is necessarily conclusive, but I want to bring this to you guys' attention. I'm going to go ahead and end the video there. If you want to see the original video that I put out just yesterday, I'll have that popping on screen. Just click the links. And until next time, thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.